Hello, yes, so thank you for welcome to my channel. My name is Tanisha, by the way. I talk about all things TV, movies, and also books. So today I'm talking about one of my favorite books, Fourth Wing, by Rebecca Yaros. Now, I have, this is a book I actually have already read, but her new book, by The Onyx Storm, which comes in this appearance series, comes out in January. So what I'm doing to prepare for that is I'm going back rereading the first two books in this series, that's Fourth Wing and also Iron Flame. So I'm going to be reading a certain number of chapters per week until we count down to Onyx Storm. I, okay, so Fourth Wing, Barbara Carreros. I first found this book on TikTok. I had heard great things about it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not really a fantasy reader, but the way someone described it, it's basically a starter guide for romance readers. If you're a romance reader, you're going to love Fourth Wing. Because a thing with fantasy reading, fantasy genre, it's a lot of world building. It's a lot of just... Uh, Really, it's a lot of world building. You're learning about different rules, different laws, different religions, and every a whole other just made up place. And oftentimes you can get kind of lost in that, and it kind of like gets there are slow parts where you have to talk about that. But in order to fully understand the plot, you gotta get that out of the way too. But the way Rebecca always writes, it's just it fits into the plot so seamlessly that you don't even realize that you're talking world building. Like for me, I could not get into the Lord of the Rings saga because it was just. The reports that were super fast and were fast and fast, but the majority of it is just super slow. I just couldn't do it. You know, I might do another book read on that one as well, too. Who knows? Comment below if you want to me to read Thor through this again. But back to fourth wing. So we start off with our protagonist, Violet Thorngale. Basically, um, it is she's a 20th, she just turned 20, and so basically it's conscription day. Conscription day is basically where all of the young adults get put into different uh, what they call quadrants of this Baskar's War College. There are four quadrants. The first one is the Scribe Quadrant. This is the one that Violet's been training for her whole life. It's basically the people who keep all the news, the books, the newspapers, the writers, the authors, all into this one section. They keep the news on what's going on in the world, and they document it, and they keep it all bolted behind what they call the archives. So she's been training her whole life to be this. And uh, her dad also was a scribe as well, too. And also what makes Violet so interesting is that she was born with a disability that her bones break a lot easier. So she always thought the scribe would be her best, safe, her safest best part. And then the second quadrant is the healer quadrant. This is the place where all the people who are the healers, doctors, nurses, all that, that's in that quadrant. Healthcare professionals. So people who are injured in battle, that's what they're for. The third is the infantry. Basically, if you don't fit into any of the other quadrants, this is where you go. If you fail the entrance exam to the others, yeah, you're going to the um, infantry, which for some might even say this is the worst kind because oftentimes the fourth quadrant, which I'll get into in a minute, they use the infantry as like cannon fodder, basically. They're the foot soldiers. They're the ones with sword in hand, and they fight. So it's, it's definitely a deadly world. There's a lot of fighting, a lot of warring going on as well, too. Uh, taking it back to the back, um, so we have two kingdoms here. We have Poromir, and then we have Navarre. And Navarre is where Violet's from, and they've been at war with each other for, like, thousands of years. So, obviously, they have to have this war college because they need new conscript because people die very quickly. Which brings us to our fourth quadrant, which makes Navarre more powerful than Poromir because Navarre has dragons. The Rider's Quadrant is for the Dragon Rider. It's by far the most deadliest because to become a rider, I mean, it's one thing you have to go through all these obstacles. You have to fight each other in what they call the sparring ring so that way you can defend, at least can prove that you can defend yourself. But then you have to come face to face with the fire breathing dragon and basically be willing enough to face them. And if they choose them, you worthy, you become a rider. If not, you are incinerated. So, it's... Uh, Hardcore world, I gotta tell you. So, Violet has been training her whole life to be a scribe. Her mother, General Elizabeth Swingale, who is a dragon writer, has decided, no, 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 no. You're becoming a writer. That's the end of this conversation. Fine. Further on, we'll find out why that is. But for right now, for now, just know that Violet's being forced in the writer's quadrant because her mom said so. 
So you can definitely tell it's a lot of tension between mother and daughter. And also the way that Violet talks about it, she feels like her mom doesn't really like her because she's considered weak and in a war college where dragons, weak is the last thing that you want to be described as. She's not as tall as anyone else. She's like average height. I would say like five five ish. -ish. So, and then her sister is a little bit taller, more muscular, built like her mom. And then her brother, Brennan, who died during the, the um, Navarian Civil War, he's a war hero. Basically, that was, in her violet eyes, that was her favorite, mom's favorite. But the Mar so going back to the Navarian Civil War, basically, prior to this really whole civil war that started out with the province of Tirandor, there are six provinces in the kingdom of Navarre. One of the larger ones is Tirandor. They separate themselves from the kingdom for a reason that we find out later on. And so um, uh, they basically had, they uh, succeeded in separating themselves from the kingdom. It would have left their borders very, very vulnerable to attack because they have what they call these magical wards that surround the entire kingdom. And so had they fallen, they would have been fallen to prey to form your attacks from their griffin riders. And basically griffin riders are like half eagle, half bird, very large, it's not long, not strong as a dragon, but pretty formidable creatures. And so these two kingdoms again been raging war. And so it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of great stuff that goes on in here. I stopped at the part where Violet Sorangale is getting ready to cross what they call the parapet. And basically it is um, a kind of, all, everything that the writers do during their kind of three years that they're in the writer's squadron, is it's all you're testing your abilities to not only ride, but to fight with a dragon. So basically it's like a, basically a balance beam that sets as high as Mount Kilimanjaro if you will. Maybe not that high, but it's pretty high up in the sky. So basically you have to balance yourself as you're walking across this beam. And if you fall, you're basically falling to your death. So does she make it? Does she not? Stay tuned. I promise I will definitely keep you updated as I go along with my reading journey as well too. I might even do a live as well here too. So like a live sprint reading. So I'll do like a little bit of reading, read with me, then we'll chat about the books we're reading. So what books are you currently reading this fall? Also, happy fall, everyone. And what books are you looking, what books are you reading? What books do you think I should read and review? Let me know in the comments below. This is a very quick little review. Just wanted to hop on here real quick. And as always, I thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. That way you stay updated when new videos are uploaded. See you all. Bye.